Hello everyone, my name is Callan, and I'll be presenting today's video. Most of the content on this channel regards image generation, but today we'll be discussing image translation. This video assumes that you've watched the earlier Cyclogan video on this channel. If you haven't seen that video yet, please watch it before continuing so you can completely understand this video. Stargan has a similar goal to Cyclegan. It aims to translate unpaired image data between distinct domains. Let's consider a brief example using Cyclegan to explain why Stargan is so important. For this example, we will be using the classes of cats, dogs, and wildlife. While using Cyclegan, in order to translate between these three classes freely, you will need two generators as well as a discriminator for each translation while using standard architectures. This is a total of 18 different models to be able to convert from any class to any class. This is where Stargan comes in. Instead of using 12 different generators and 6 different discriminators, Stargan proposes a method to use a single generator and discriminator to convert between any of these classes. The architecture for Stargan is very similar to the architecture for Cyclegan. The generator structure is still typically an autoencoder, and the discriminator will still output the same number regarding how real or fake an image is. The changes come in the forms of inputs and outputs for the model. The generator will now receive more than just an image. It will now also receive a label for a target class that it should attempt to convert to. This label is defined by the creator of the program and is unique for each domain. In Stargan, this label is a one-hot vector, meaning that the value is zero for each class that it is not converting to, and a one for the class that it is converting to. The paper that suggested Stargan incorporates this label by spatially replicating the label to the size of the image and appending it as an additional channel of the input image, in addition to the standard red, blue, and green channels. With that said, you may also incorporate the label with other techniques such as adaptive instance normalization or modulated convolutions. The discriminator also has a bit of an overhaul in Stargan. In addition to outputting the single number as to how real or fake an image is, the discriminator is now also tasked with outputting a classification. This is in the same format as the label, though the numbers will be different according to the discriminator's discretion of how likely the image is to be a certain class. The generator now has three learning objectives. The first is how much the generated image looks like a real image. This is found using the discriminator's real or fake output on a generated image. The generator performs well by fooling the discriminator into believing its image is real. The second goal is how much a generated image looks like the target domain in comparison to the target label. This is found using the discriminator's classifier output compared to the original target label. Similarly to before, the generator scores well by fooling the discriminator's classifier output into believing it has generated the target class. Finally, the generator will use a cycle consistency loss like Cyclegan. Now, instead of using a new generator, the generated image will be run back through the same generator, only with a source label instead, so that the generator will translate it back into the original image. The generator is then penalized for any differences between the original and reconstructed images. As in typical GAN architecture, the discriminator's first objective uses the real fake output. The goal of this output is to correctly identify real images from a class and images generated by the generator. The other objective for the discriminator regards classification output. It must be able to correctly identify what class an item belongs to. It will learn this by examining a real image and comparing its classification output to the real label. Now just like that, you know the core ideas of Stargan. If you'd like to see this implemented in Python using TensorFlow 2.3, you can find my implementation on GitHub in the description of this video. There will also be a video accompanying this implementation that goes through the code in a tutorial fashion. You can find this video here. If you liked this video, please leave a like and check out some of the other videos on this channel. Thank you for watching.